for this lecture, we're going to look at McCarthyism and the Red Scare. So as I mentioned in a previous lecture, this was definitely a time of fear for Americans, uh, fear from what the Soviet Union might do. Might they try to bomb us or might there be Soviet spies within our midst? And this starts what we call the Red Scare. So during this time, uh, there is a senator from Wisconsin, and his name is Joseph McCarthy, and he ends up having a lot of power uh, during the Cold War, during this particular time. Some of you maybe have studied McCarthy a little bit in your American Lit class. Um, if you have, that's really great. You can take some of that prior knowledge. But if you haven't, here's a little introduction to him. So what McCarthy does is he really revs up that fear in people. And we have talked about so many times how fear makes us do maybe things that we wouldn't normally do if we were not fearful. And he's quoted as saying this, I have here in my hand a list of 205 people who are known to the Secretary of State as being members of the Communist Party and who nevertheless are still working and shaping policy at the State Department. What McCarthy is doing is actually accusing people, accusing people within our federal government system of having ties to the Communist Party. So that's going to rev up that fear even more because now he's sharing this information with the American public and they are starting to panic thinking that communist spies have already infiltrated our government system. Not only are they fearful of those government spies uh, infiltrating the government system, but as he states in there, the fact that there are already known members of the Communist Party and that our government isn't doing anything to stop them. So if we look at the results of Senator Joseph McCarthy's claims, uh, this is what happens it really does spark this anti-communist hysteria in our country. People start accusing their neighbors, their maybe even a brother, sister, family member, right? They start looking at everybody suspiciously, worried that they might be a part of the communist party. So you've got this anti-communist hysteria going on. Really the targets, the people that he was going after the most were government officials, educators and actors. Again, he was always concerned that these people maybe had a stage, that they had a lot of influence in our country. And he was worried that if they were communists, that they might be spreading communist ideals to others in the country. One thing I think that's rather ironic, however, is he himself actually had a large stage. He was an elected official. He was a United States senator, right? So here you have a senator who himself has a big stage, yet he's targeting others with the same big stage. When we talk about targeting others, uh, this could mean that these people were harassed, these people were arrested, they were questioned, some of them even thrown in jail, and many people lost their jobs. But almost more importantly than that, they lost their reputation as well after being accused of being communist. So what McCarthy does then, again, is he, you know, sends HUAC to investigate people. Even though, you know, again, he's claimed that there are 205 people in the State Department that are known communist or known to have ties to the Communist Party, no one's doing anything about it, he's never really able to prove those claims. And so he sends HUAC, the House Un-American Activities Committee, after those people. As we continue to look at the results of this anti-communist hysteria that was sparked by Joseph McCarthy, through the midst of that, he was up for re-election. And guess what? Even though he never had any solid proof or evidence uh, while accusing these people, he actually does get re-elected. And if you want to kind of think for a moment about, well, why does he get re-elected? Well, the reason he gets re-elected in Wisconsin is because people start saying, what if he is right? So far, he hasn't been able to prove his claims, but what if he is right? We need to reelect him. We need to give him that time and our support to try to prove his claims. However, uh, we know that he really is unable to prove those claims. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. But again, if you were someone that was accused by McCarthy, you lost your jobs, you mentioned you lost your reputation, maybe family members. If you were accused, you know, maybe your sibling wouldn't want to have ties to you because then they might be accused. And of course, no one speaks out against McCarthy because of course, if they speak out against him, they will be accused next. Eventually, after enough time has passed, people start to realize that McCarthy really is never going to be able to prove his claim 
um, that you know there are over 200 members of the Communist Party, or again, people with communist ties in our government system. And so his new target now is actually the army. So in 1954, he actually goes after members of the armed forces and now accuses them of having ties to the Communist Party. The difference between these hearings and others that he had is these are televised. So you have the Army McCarthy uh, hearings that are televised. So, you know, the, the everyday American is watching these on TV. What people are realizing as they're watching these hearings is that he really doesn't have much proof. It's becoming more and more obvious that he has no proof of any of these accusations. And by the end of it, uh, Americans really had lost faith in Joseph McCarthy. He ends up losing all of his power in the Senate and actually later actually is censored by the U.S. government because of these false claims. And of course, uh, punishments had been reversed, you know, the people that were thrown in jail um, and actions, his actions had been declared unconstitutional during that time. After McCarthy's fall from grace and fall from power in the Senate, uh, his name now is, is used as a joke, right? And when they talk about McCarthyism, um, it's a term that's used to define accusations of disloyalty. I know some of you, again, had studied McCarthyism in American Lit when you looked at the Salem witch trials, right? Again, it's that idea of accusing people really with no evidence or proof. 